Good afternoon, 47. Your destination is the annual Global Innovation Motor Race in Miami, Florida. After analyzing the data from Maynard's computer, the case is clear. The Providence defectors are Robert and Sierra Knox, head of robotics developer Kronstadt Industries. A visionary inventor and technological innovator, Robert Knox has spearheaded Kronstadt Industries to the bleeding edge of technological development. His equally brilliant daughter, Sierra, is not only a financial wizard, but also a fiercely competitive race car driver with a fiery temper to match. Kronstadt enjoys enormous popularity with global consumers. However, few are aware that the company is also one of the world's leading suppliers of next-gen military tech. Last year, despotic ruler Jin Po employed prototype Kronstadt drones against peaceful civilian protesters in the now infamous Tungyan Valley incident. And although it has yet to be proven, there is little doubt that the Noxes personally broke the deal, making them complicit in a war crime. It is unclear why the Noxes would betray their masters, but likely the fear of being next on the Shadow Client's hit list has pressured them to cut a deal with the enemy. Undoubtedly, with Kronstadt Industries on their side, the militia will increase their attacks tenfold, and so our contract obligates us to retire Robert and Sierra Knox and contain the damage they may inflict on Providence. I will leave you to prepare. Welcome to Miami, 47. The innovation race is on its last day, and it is down to the wire. Thousands of eager fans are gathered for the final laps of this unexpectedly close race. Sierra Knox is expertly piloting her red Kronstadt car. Her father, Robert Knox, roams the nearby expo building where Kronstadt is showcasing its new prototype car. The Kronstadt RK Mark III has seen fierce competition from the Chinese Kowoon Heavy Industries' new racer. Moses Lee, CEO of Kowoon, has taken a dominant lead and looks invincible. The stakes are as high as they can get. Ready to meet up with Sierra Knox over at the hotel. Yeah, after the race. I just got to pick up the documents from my van, but um, I had to knock out a guy and steal his flamingo outfit. And now I can't find my car keys. Yeah, I know it's dumb. I think I lost them in the scuffle, but the real mascot is still over there. If I don't get them, I've got no evidence. Bye bye money. I don't know. I, I, I need to figure something out. I'll talk soon. A disgruntled Kronstadt employee has acquired some dirt on Sierra Knox and intends on blackmailing her. Disguised as one of the racing mascots, he plans to meet Sierra by the old motel. Well, I always did feel that pink was your color, 47. Hey, hey, can you do me a favor? Go check if my keys are over there. The guy's crazy and I don't dare go over there, but you look pretty tough. Please. Sir, don't move. I'll call for assistance, but for now I need you to stay still. Oh, my head. Where, where are my 
clothes. Have you seen my mascot outfit? Oh, my head is killing me. Hey, yo, did you find some keys over there? Oh man, you're a real lifesaver, thank you. The race is entering its final lap, 47. Knox, come back after the race. Forty-seven, the race is over. Sierra will be coming off the track any time now. <laughs> nice outfit. Really brings out your eyes. Miss Knox informed me you'd be here. She has to make sure you brought the documents. So, did you bring the documents? I have the papers right here. Excellent. Come on in. Have a seat or something. I'll let Miss Knox know you're here. So far, so good, 47. Now, let's see where this meeting is headed. So, uh, you here for a job application or what? Something like that. Nice. If you don't mind me saying so, your particular choice of attire is maybe a little, I don't know, off? For a job interview, I mean. My suit is at the cleaners. And you couldn't find anything else to wear? Correct. You must lead a very interesting life, my friend. You have no idea. Yeah, keep it real. Yes, Miss Knox? There's a guy here wearing a mascot outfit claiming you have an appointment with him. Wouldn't give his name. Got it. I'll let him know you're en route. Hey, Flamingo guy. Miss Knox is on her way. Grab a seat somewhere. She'll be here as soon as she can. So, it's a great outfit. Thinking it must get pretty warm in there, though. It's insulated. Huh. Imagine that. I guess it would have to be if you're supposed to wear it for hours and hours every day. Do you, you know, get to use it at home? For parties and things like that, I mean. No. Right, right. I, uh, I have a friend who's into that sort of thing. Cosplay, assuming imaginary identities. He says it's very liberating. It takes him out of the stress of everyday life and work, you know? Not really. Yeah, I guess it's different when you do it for a living. How's the pay? Sufficient. Nice. Okay, good talk.
Is it weird that mascots turn me on? So, Mr. Hmm. I never did catch your name. Names are for friends. Very well. Straight to the point in all business. Walk with me. Where are we going? Don't worry. What am I gonna do? Kill you in broad daylight. I just want a bit of privacy here. Not about to do sensitive business like this in front of an audience. Good idea. So just to get this straight, you claimed in your email to have somehow found internal reports that show Kronstadt's involvement in the Tungan Valley Massacre. Sounds about right. Let's be clear. You and I are having this meeting because my father doesn't need to know about this. It's just another undesired distraction. I don't care if the information is true or false. I don't care if it mentions moving money from the Nexus Project into Tungan Valley Damage Control, as you claimed in your correspondence. I do care about protecting my father, which is why you and I are now here. I see. Leave me alone for a few minutes, guys. Sure thing, Miss Knox. Uh, if you need us, just call. We're right around the corner. So here's the deal. You hand over the documents and leave, and that's the end of it. And you will do that now. So here are the two possible outcomes of this meeting. One, you will leave this place and this country for good, and that will be the end of it. Everyone lives happily ever after. Two, you don't choose option one. Someone dies, right here, right now. Which do you prefer? Not much of a choice, is it? No, not really. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Target down. Next up, Robert Knox. only be a tech reporter, but I have ambitions too, you know. The fact is that Kronstadt is very Robert Knox has a race car on display in the expo building. The show staff is under strict instructions to summon him at any sign of malfunction. Apparently, Knox trusts no one to fix his car but him. Hmm. Perhaps it's time to poke around under the hood, 47. They do say one should never mess with another man's wheels. Thank you. 
Sounds like a good idea. <sighs> Isn't someone else supposed to be doing this? Good. I dare say this should get Nox's undivided attention. Huh. Why's the engine off? Let's ah, just try to there. get this started again. Well, that doesn't sound good. Better call Nox. Mr. Knox? Yeah, it's Smith from down at the Expo. Listen, the Mark III's making some, well, just odd noises. Uh, can you come? Great. All right. Yep. Yeah, I'll be here. Target's down. Well done, 47. Head for an exit, and we'll speak again soon.
Berlin. Shanghai. Montreal. We're bleeding operatives. Panic is spreading, and now we are axing our own? Knox was a traitor. He would have caused incalculable damage. And he won't be the last. This is exactly what the enemy wants. We need to fight the sickness, not the symptom. And I have just the tool for the job. Right. The Burnwood woman. Eric Soders warned you about her, didn't he? The Crusader. I can handle Miss Burnwood. Everyone hates power until you offer them some. And you ought to know. ICA speaks the enemy's language. We need them. And once we don't... <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Fact remains, we are shadowboxing. We need to know who we are up against. I was getting to that. His name is Lucas Gray, the late Mr. Cobb's head of security. Cobb was ground zero, first of our operatives to die. It had to be one of his staff, someone with military training and access to the plane. Yeah, grasping at straws. Gray is a mercenary, a veteran of every backwater tragedy you've ever ignored on the five o'clock news. Chechnya, Sierra Leone, the list goes on, but before 89, nothing. No records of any kind. Now, oh, come on. CIA, KGB, plenty of spies went dark. After the curtain was lifted, I cast a very wide net. Lucas Gray simply does not exist. <clears throat> if you're all quite done wetting yourselves with excitement, I couldn't give two shits where he came from. I only want to know one thing. How does he know about us? I swear to God, this hearts and flowers crap will get us both killed. Can't you see? Your so-called friend is working for them now. He's not the man you knew. This is his fight too, Olivia. Even if he doesn't realize it. Like it or not, 47 is our last and only lead on the partners. He needs to remember. He's coming for us. And unlike you, he won't hesitate. Just get me inside. Rico, I need a favor. 